Hi, so you've decided to go for a doctorate in Germany. I think that's a great idea. So the first thing that you think about then is how do you get funding for such an endeavor? Because in the sciences, like in ecology, you need to be uh, funded in order to do a research. And I speak mostly here about funding for you, not for doing the research per se. So in Germany, there are basically two fundamentally different modes via which you can get money for yourself to do a PhD. One is a scholarship and the other one is employment. In terms of employment, you basically have two choices. Either you are employed by like a state-funded position in a research lab, like at a university, or you are uh, employed on a research grant. The pay is according to uh, usually a, a state salary scale. Um, it's E13, typically 65% is what you will see in uh, job announcements, and the position usually runs for three years. And it is an employment contract, so, so it comes with benefits like um, unemployment insurance, uh, retirement benefits, and so on and so forth, and health insurance. If the position is state-funded, like a position that comes, for example, with the research lab or the university in which you're in, then these positions always come with a teaching assignment. Whereas if you're funded from a research grant, like a third-party funded um, project, then there is no teaching requirement. Those um, state-funded positions are typically much more flexible in terms of what you can work on because they're not directly linked to a grant, which usually pursues a certain goal. On the other hand, the grant-funded positions, of course, don't come with a teaching assignment, but they come with the assignment to deliver on a certain uh, set of goals that were described in the research proposal that funded you. The next mode of funding is from scholarships, and scholarships are available from quite a range of different organizations. There are, for example, uh, resources from the states, so the federal states in Germany. For example, Berlin has a program that funds PhD students. It's called the Elsa Neumann program. Then there's the German Academic Scholarship Foundation, Studienstiftung des Deutschen Volkes, for example. They also fund um, highly talented students uh, for their PhD. This is probably one of the most prestigious awards for scholarships you can get. Specifically more for ecology, there is um, Deutsche Bundesstiftung Umwelt gives um, scholarships that are for environmental topics in the broader sense. If you are from a foreign country, you can apply, depending on which country you are from, to scholarships from the German Academic Exchange Service or Deutscher Akademischer Austauschdienst, DAAD. That's also a great program if you want to come to Germany from abroad. And then there are many others. Um, most other scholarships are then linked to some political party and they come with um, an additional program that accompanies you during your PhD. And we've had um, a whole range of different um, party funded scholarships also in our lab. Now you need to check the requirements for scholarships. They, they often pay about 1,450 euro currently. And they are figured so that they're the equivalent in payout from like an employment contract. You still need to uh, pay for your health insurance. That is also figured in. And as, a po as opposed to like a research grant that pays you, where there is also money for you to do the actual research, the costs of the, doing the lab research, for example, scholarships typically don't come with that kind of cost. So you need to make sure that the host lab um, can actually pay for the cost of the research itself. On the other hand, Germany has no tuition and very minimal registration fees. That here in Berlin, for example, they are basically covering the cost of public transportation. Uh, so it's from that perspective, it's free. For these scholarships, the application procedures, of course, vary widely depending on which agency or organization you're applying to, but they all uh, require sort of a CV, a personal statement, and then a project description, a layout of what you're going to do during these three years of your PhD. That is universal among all of them. And of course, they come with different deadlines and, um, and different other requirements and uh, different age requirements, for example, application uh, requirements. So it's, it's super important to check the specifics of each of these scholarships. So you can, of course, apply to several of them. 
And for example, your project description can move from application to application, but there are also uh, several aspects that are relatively specific to the different organizations. And that personal statement is a narrative of your achievements. You, has, you have to sort of tailor it to the particular organization. And what should also be somehow contained in your application package is the degree of continuity that this path towards the PhD represents for you, like what have you done in the past, for example, for your master's or bachelor's degree. And then how are you now building on that experience for your PhD and what can you bring to the lab and why have you chosen this particular lab? That's usually very important to include in a convincing way. Looking back at these two basic choices, the scholarships on the one hand and the employment on the other hand, there, there's pros and cons, right? So um, for scholarships, for example, a pro is that this is money that you actually got. It is paid to you. It's not paid to the university, for example, like a grant or the state-funded uh, amount of money for the position. It is therefore very much something that you could put in your CV because it is something that you achieved. And you write that project description, not somebody else. So you can then very much pursue what exactly you are curious about. So uh, that is a big advantage because you can really pursue exactly what you want to do. Um, that is sometimes, of course, also possible with the employment. If the research grant was on something that you are just intensely curious about as well, but chances are that from a research grant, this has been written by somebody else and with a, their own set of goals. And the chances that, that this is exactly what you want to do is uh, maybe not super high. So you usually need to adjust a little bit to fit into this grant, which is just fine. But um, if you value your own ideas and your own freedom more than anything else, then maybe a scholarship is the better option for you. And there are some disadvantages as well. For example, uh, scholarships don't accrue benefits like unemployment benefits or retirement benefits. That's probably not so important to you now, but might be important later if you want to stay in Germany, for example. Either way, whichever path you take, of course, it's uh, super important that you establish contact with your potential host lab and let them also advise you on which are the particular um, opportunities at this point in time. Like, do they uh, have grants pending or um, yeah, do they see an opportunity for scholarships that are particular to the region, for example, of this university and the research field? Good luck.